Hi everyone, in this video I will be reviewing my recently completed project and I hope you will find this video useful and interesting. So I like to start with the basics uh, for all of my projects and for this project it was walls and let's unhide the layer here and here you can see the walls that I have and uh, if I open the group so basically it's just lines that if we turn off all the modifiers I have the lines here basic splines and then I just extruded them uh, added some additional geometry the next thing I do is I make a floor and uh, for the floor I also have just spline that was extruded and then I move on to creating a windows and doors so I have the separate layers here so uh, if we open this layer, I have the doors and windows for this area here and doors and windows for the bedroom. Uh, but we'll review only the living room and the kitchen area. For the windows, I like to use the script, uh, which is called UPVC Window Generator. And that script allows you basically to create windows for any size. Let's create uh, the window from here unless you need some something specific you can actually uh, use the script uh, Yeah, here you can set up uh, as you can see just by one click It creates you the window that you need and you can adjust the height and let's say 200 by I don't know uh, 100 and it will adjust everything that you need and after you finish with this you just convert the geometry and now you have uh, ready window it's a really nice script that helps you to create different types of windows same thing with the blindfolds uh, for this project I, I wanted to have this type of blindfolds and uh, I also have the script for these blindfolds which is the basically blind curtains generator and it works kind of the same as the window generator so basically you can also create many types of different blindfolds and uh, yeah it's a really useful script you can also create it in just like one minute or so and for the doors i uh, just used a basic box because yeah this is the type of doors that we have in this project and i used some um, model for the handles yeah so now that they're ready we can move on to the next step uh, next i created a kitchen cabinets let's unhide this layer before creating the kitchen uh, like cabinets, I just like firstly to start with the boxes and after putting the boxes to see the general shape and the structure of the kitchen uh, by using the edge loops and inset editable poly cuts, I just create the shelves, the doors for the shelves. And for this kitchen, it was very minimalistic and I didn't have to do much and it didn't take me pretty long time. Uh, I used uh, ready models for the tap and for the sink and uh, same for the oven and other appliances and yeah nothing too crazy nothing too special for the kitchen I added the lights here but we'll go over it if we unhide it we can see the lights here but we'll go over it uh, go over it later when we uh, see the lights so um, yeah this is how it looks like uh, nothing too hard or difficult here very easy, it didn't take me much to set up this kitchen. After completing the modeling for the kitchen, uh, I moved up to a dining part, which is if we open this layer here, you can see it's pretty much also very easy. I used um, the chair model for it that I downloaded. And same with the table, I added some accessories here on top. And uh, yeah, here we also have the light. Nothing too difficult here as well. In terms of modeling, I don't think there is much to say. Uh, we can move to the next part of living room, which is living room. Yes, once we unhide it. And here I have just the curtains, which I also downloaded. It was a ready model. Uh, I used FFD uh, to adjust the size. And uh, I think this is like the best way to adjust the sizes of the curtain or anything that you have, because you can always turn it off and, you know, uh, it has more control and you can just like manipulate the, the size and everything you need with this. Had a sofa model uh, for the table. I think I just used, I modeled it myself and just used like a boxes. Uh, added some accessories here. As you can see, the, the rug is also pretty easy to model here. 
which is just by using the splines of different size and then and then just arraying it. We have the TV wall here and TV panel, which I also modeled by myself because I found some really nice TV uh, panel, uh, wall panel on the internet, but I couldn't find the model or like similar to it. So I just modeled it myself, which is also pretty easy. Just creating a plane, uh, adding edge loops and adding the shell modifier. That's it actually for the modeling part. Now that we're done with the geometry and modeling, we can uh, actually set up the cameras here. Now we can just like unhide the camera here. And uh, for for the main view, I use the living room six camera, I think. You can select the camera by going to the view and select the camera. I put it to target. So my camera's position is actually at about 60 centimeters and my camera target is about uh, at 90 so it's slightly like going up i have the field of view of 70. i put the automatic vertical tilt because if you don't have it turned on it's like your perspective is going to be kind of distorted and we don't want that so i have the camera clipping here which means that it kind of cuts through the wall because if we don't have it we would just see the wall right even and if i go to the top view and i show you my camera so you can see here uh, we can control the clipping by uh, showing it on viewport and you can see like as we move it like that's how it's gonna cut the walls and now that i'm done with the camera setup and modeling i can move on to the lights and for the lights for this main scene uh, i have only like two or three light sources because it's gonna be a daylight with the sun we don't need to add any ceiling lights unless you you are planning to uh, later make an image with a, a much darker scenario like evening or something but for, for this one I didn't want to put any lights on the ceiling and uh, I have only Corona Sun here which is on this one and I added the Corona Sky environment and uh, for the intensity I put one and for the size I put two. The size basically means that the bigger the size of the sun, the uh, smoother the shade uh, shadows are going to be and the less the size is, the sharper the sh uh, shadows are going to be from the, from the sun. We also have two lights here. Uh, let's open this group for the, for the kitchen lights. And here I have the intensity of 300 lumen. I like to put the lumen for the units and uh, for the Kelvin temperature, I have 4000, which means that the higher the temperature is, the cooler the light is going to be. And the lower the temperature is, the warmer the light is going to be. And that's pretty much it. I, after grouping it, I called the whole group the kitchen. And now if we go to the settings, render settings, and uh, to, to make them appear in our interact, uh, in our uh, light mix, we can just press the setup light, light mix button and it will set, up, set it up automatically. Uh, I will not press it because I already have them and I have also different lights from the different rooms. But for this one, uh, I don't need actually any of them. And uh, the next thing I would do is I would go to material override. I would turn it on. I would put here basic Corona physical material. And here we, I put the preserve displacement, bump, uh, opacity. That means that uh, the material will not override these uh, parameters. And now let's press the render button. And I'll not go over the post-production here for now. Uh, I just add a simple exposure so that we can see and like everything clearly. And uh, let's talk about the light mix. So here I have uh, my environment sky skylight. If we turn it on, it's basically brightens all the scene. We have the sun and uh, yeah, I just adjusted slightly the parameters of the sun. If we put on one, it's kind of too bright. And uh, I decided to put it on 0.1. And uh, the kitchen lights we have here, I thought that the, the color wasn't uh, warm enough. So I adjusted my colors by myself and uh, I raised the 
I raised the value of the light. So here is how it looks like with just being one. And here's how it looks with the, the four. So uh, now we can go to actually the default shading mode and uh, let's go over the materials here. I do firstly the, uh, the walls materials and it's just pretty simple material. There is nothing in here. Um, it's just a Corona color and uh, I have a base roughness. I didn't even touch it. It's pretty basic. Then let's go to our floor material, which is slightly more different. So I have a regular texture here. Then I added a color correction slot here. I corrected the color and here is how the floor looks like. And I also added the color correction for the base glossiness. I had a normal bump. Uh, normal bump. So I connected it to Corona normal and in Corona normal the important thing is to add gamma to input. Uh, if you don't do this actually it's gonna uh, look pretty weird. So uh, I adjusted the strength here and that's it for the floor material. Next uh, let's go to unhide the kitchen. By the way I use the same material as for the walls to the ceiling. And here we have also a wood material for the kitchen cabinets. Let's pick this material and see what it's made from. And again, uh, very simple, uh, nothing too difficult here. I had a bitmap, uh, a texture of the wood. wood. Uh, I added a color correction here and adjusted the gamma and con contrast. Uh, reduce the saturation, I connected the color correction again and added to the glossiness map and I had a normal map for this texture which I uh, added the normal, Corona normal to and I adjusted the strength multiplier and I left everything else on the default. For the plastic I just added the Corona color, just a simple white color and I just adjusted the roughness which is 0.4 uh, now let's unhide the dining and for the dining uh, okay. uh, Also very basic materials here. I use the white plastic here. So for the fabric, let's pick the fabric material that I used here So I had uh, two textures here and they're the same textures, but they are just uh, different in the in the tone so I added the falloff I adjusted the, the curve and to, to give it like slightly like fabric look and here's how the fall off map looks like and I added it to the base, base color and I had just a, a grayscale bitmap for the bump and uh, after I'm done with all the materials and you could see that it's pretty basic I can now hit the render button and uh, here we can go over the post-production that I did in the frame buffer. Oh, let's uh, let's turn off the material override and hit the render button again. And in the post-production, I had an exposure of two. I reduced the saturation to minus 0.10 here. And I also added some vignette here, uh, 0.6. I added some filmic highlight compress and rich shadows. So uh, it just makes like slight difference, but that's totally up to your taste. And uh, in the end, we end up with this image. So this is the raw image without post-production. I save it usually without the background because I like to add it in the Photoshop afterwards. And uh, yeah, here is our final rendered image without any post-production. And after everything, I put my image into the Photoshop and um, here you can see what I have is just a few layers. So uh, we have a background here. So it's basically this image. I added hue saturation and adjusted the lightness and saturation here. Here's our normal image. I duplicated this image and uh, let me do this again to show you what I did. Uh, yeah, let's duplicate the layer. And from here, I, I like to use Camera Raw Filter. I go to Camera Raw Filter. Uh, you can press either Auto Correction and then adjust everything or just do everything from scratch. So uh, 
Here you can just adjust the contrast of the image, uh, adjust the blacks, whites, uh, shadows, right? Uh, to whatever you like. Uh, increase the texture values, clarity values, the haze slightly. We can add some more vignette if you want. And uh, yeah, just play with the temperature if you need it to. Uh, in my case, I think I will just leave it as is. And this is the image that we end up with. And I hope you liked this video and uh, you found it useful. And uh, thank you for watching.